Hey everybody and welcome to No Scrubs, the only show on the interwebs here to help you have no bad hires. Of course, we're coming to you from the gang here at Fistful of Talent and from our great sponsors, Jobvite, that's J-O-B-V-I-T-E. I'm Dawn Burke. I'm the host of No Scrubs and a contributor for Fistful of Talent. I'm also the VP of People for Birmingham, Alabama-based software company, Daxco. So here, let's get to it. I want to introduce our very, very special guest, Marin Hogan. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. Oh, I know. It is exciting. And today we're going to be talking about a blog post that I wrote for Jobvite and FOT a few weeks ago. It's about merging your HR function with a marketing function. Actually, the title of the piece is called Your ne Next Great HR Hire Should Be a Marketing Pro. So before we talk about it, you were the perfect marketing pro. So <laughs> Marin, tell everybody what you do, where you're at, um, and all the fabulous things that you're doing and where you're going to be and all that good stuff. Wonderful. Well, thank you um, again for having me, Don. Um, so my name is Marin Hogan. I was actually one of the very first writers that Fought ever hired. Um, and I love the entire team here. They continue to bring amazing stuff to the conversation around HR and marketing. And uh, one of the reasons I think that I did start working with Chris and the entire team at Festival of Talent was to figure out, like, how come so many great marketing pros can can read into HR. What is it that they bring to the table? So Marin, tell us where Red Branch Media is located. Red Branch Media is located in Omaha, Nebraska. We have clients all over the world, uh, but we also have clients here locally. And so uh, last year we built out an employer branding function um, that's been working really well. And even though we're in the Midwest, we find ourselves ideally situated and located to be able to serve people all over the globe. See, that's fantastic. Um, Marin's been a mover and shaker in the interwebs uh, regarding marketing and HR for years. I started following you before I started writing for Fistful of Talent. So why don't you share with people what your Twitter handle is so they can start following you right now. All right. Uh, my Twitter handle is my first and last names. It's M-A-R-E-N-H-O-G-A-N, Marin Hogan. You can find me there on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and pretty much anything else you could have signed up for post-2006. Okay, good. Very good. All right, well, let's jump into the meat of the matter, HR and marketing. So in the post, I recalled my college years when uh, we're talking about the early 90s and my first experience on a chat room. All right, remember that? Remember those days where one of my friends was like, hey, uh, check this out. And I'm like, what is it? I said, hey, you can jump on and you can talk to anybody in the world and you can say anything you want. And pretty much that kind of rocked my world. Um, and that's really, I think, the beginning of then the internet kind of exploded. Um, certainly our whole world's changed regarding transparency. Yeah. That changed transparency in the organization. Uh, and then with more transparency and freedom as far as communication was concerned, uh, companies really had to then become a lot more engaging uh, to keep team members. Uh, and one of the problems I think that HR teams had for a long time was being the agent of engagement. Uh, so now we fast forward to 2016, and I am suggesting that HR teams actually should actively have marketing partners on their teams. So Marin, first, I, I want to get your expertise certainly on HR and marketing, but got, tell the audience about the first time you remember jumping on the internet or jumping on a chat room, or uh, I would love to hear your story. I mean, I wish I could use my mouth to make the sound that you used to have to listen to before getting on All right, yeah. Prodigy or uh, AOL online, right. but I, I won't do that. To sure, you. sure. Um, so, I don't know, the first time I remember literally being on a chat room period was probably around the same time, 1993, 1994. Yeah. Um, I was I was slightly younger, although not much, and I remember we were looking up cute boys in Santa Cruz. Oh, right, right. I <laughs> just find out. Uh, me and my friend Jill were trying to find out, like, hey, are any of these guys near us? Like, where do they live? Of course. It was, it was pretty, uh, I would say it was, um, it was like sourcing. Yeah, right, right. My boys, which is very weird. Yes. And see, and this was pre-Facebook, guys. I know it's hard to imagine, but this was pre-Facebook. So before that, the only way you really met people or found out about stuff was, oh, I don't know 
running into them at the, oh, I don't know, grocery store. I'm not sure. So uh, this was like a whole new thing. So now let's flip to here and how marketing and HR really should be good partners in a modern in a modern corporation. Uh, so if you had to pick one thing in your expertise, just one thing, uh, what do you think would be one of the best things that marketing could provide an HR function to uh, help support them? So I think that this answer has changed probably over the last decade, but currently the best thing that marketing can provide HR is a true sell. So if, you view, if, you're, if you're a marketer and you come into an HR department, you view candidates, applicants, employees as your prospects, yes, right? Correct. Uh, so candidates and applicants and, and even passive job seekers are your prospects and employees are your current customers. So your okay. desire is to serve well and upsell. Yes. So that's how a marketer views those two groups. And okay. I really feel like marketing can help HR see Here's where we can do better. Here's where we can be a little bit more honest. Here's okay. how we can help people that are never going to be happy with our product. And here are in HR, our product is the work experience. Okay. It's the, huh. is the engagement. It is the job. It is everything that you don't think about it as something that you're selling, but it's something that you're selling. So how can we package that so that the right people come a call in? Okay. The wrong people go, whoa, not mm -hmm. me. And the current people, the people that we have, you know, it's a marketing and sales adage that it's much harder to get new clients than it is to upsell a happy current client. Yes. And so I, I think what marketing can do for HR is say, hey, these are your current clients. Don't mess it up. Yes. Okay. So I love this term upsell. I'm going to completely steal this. Um, I love it. I love it. Let's talk about that a little bit. Because uh, we'll talk about recruiting, let's, we'll talk about the sell for a, a little bit later. But the upsell, so I'm, I am translating that into keeping your current team members engaged. Is that correct? So, so do you have some tips? I mean, a lot of people overthink engagement. I think they overthink it. What are some simple things that you think marketing departments could do, or HR departments should learn from marketing departments to help upsell the current employees? I think there's multiple things. Um, you and, and some other folks that are have been in this space for a while might remember that I spent a great deal of time in the travel sector. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we're doing when we mess up engagement is um, is pulling apart the experience and stuff. Okay. So you can give people stuff. You can mm -hmm. give them like logoed sweatshirts and like cool water bottles and you know, blankets with the company logo on them and sure. you get a ping pong table, that's stuff. Right. But the experience is succession planning. Right. The experience is career pathing. Okay. The experience is rewards and recognition and solid, true performance management. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and if you go back to the travel sector, you'll, you'll have read thousands of studies that say, you know, it's not really about taking the trip. It's about planning the trip. Don't spend your money on stuff. Spend it on experiences. Yes. From yourself to kids. So why aren't we doing that in HR? A job above all else is what we spend most of our lives doing. Why aren't we trying to make it a better experience? Okay. Why are we treating people like crap day in and day out and then saying, hey, but here's like your bonus at the end of the year or here's your, I know golden watches aren't a thing anymore, but you mm -hmm. know, here's your Rolex. Like, no, that's, that's not what you do. You, you treat them well, you make the experience better. Maybe you cut down on the stuff or maybe the stuff is just great. Um, so I, I think that the upsell is really about the experience, how you treat people day in and day out the kind of constructive criticism that you can give within performance reviews that make them better at their jobs, that give them a clear path through the organization, and letting them know that there's opportunity at the end of the tunnel. Okay. All right. Just a lamp. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. Or that gold watch. Uh, so let's now talk a little bit about grabbing, selling the, uh, selling or getting the right candidates through the door. All right. There are some folks, some HR folks that are going to watch this that are probably a one-person HR shop. And their company probably read somewhere that, hey, for every 200 employees you have, you just need one HR pro. Make it work. All right. So that's a whole nother job. That's a whole nother uh, blog post, Marin. Um, but what are some simple things? And let's talk about recruiting. Let's talk about recruiting because that's really, talent acquisition is probably the uh, most visible uh, value proposition in the HR group has. Uh, most impactful the most quickly. 
What are just a very few simple things that one or two person HR team can do from a marketing perspective to help attract the right candidates? One or two simple things. The first thing is to recognize the distinction between job requirements and job advertisements. Okay. Job listings and job advertisements. Okay. Um, job requirements are the things that you see that say 25% of your time will be spent typing. You might have to move a box or stand up or sit down. Like that does right. not attract anyone. And I always use um, a really easy analogy, at least for me. So, you know, when you go to buy a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. amazing shoes, on the side of the box it says size six and a half, you know, wide width if you're me. Um, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, you know, black, two and a half inch heel. That's the specs, right? Mm -hmm. That's the job specs. That's the requirement. But when you see that shoe in the middle of Murray Claire, oh, I'm sure. it's spread on Carly Clausen's foot or whatever her name is. <laughs> like that is a job advertisement. Okay. You are selling a lifestyle. Okay. Your job as if you are an HR pro and you are handling recruiting and you have to write job ads is to say this is what your life would look like with this shoe. Okay. I mean, job. Right. So sell them the lifestyle. Okay. Don't sell them the sh stuff that they have to do every day. Is it easier to sell the lifestyle in words or in pictures? Both. Okay. Um, I think I think the very easiest way. Now I'm a reader, so I prefer okay. words. But oh. most people, I've been told, as an alien on this planet, <laughs> yeah. prefer videos okay. and visuals. So I think letting people know what to expect, showing them what their team might look like, and giving them insight into their day-to-day -day life. Again. Selling the lifestyle. It's just like selling a condo. It's like selling a purse or a luxury car. Think about it. If you're hiring someone who's going to make between 50 and 90 grand a year, you need to sell that job as well as somebody sells that Acura. Yeah. You need to sell that job as well as somebody sells that timeshare. Are you? Probably not. Okay. All right. Is there a way to measure? Is there a way to measure if you're selling it properly? Um, I don't know if there's a way to measure if you're selling it properly. If you find yourself overwhelmed with qualified candidates, that means you've written a great job ad that also lets people know what the downsides are. Okay. The organization. You don't say downside, but you might say, no. you know what? Nobody stays here till 7 p.m. at night, but we work our butts off until 4.30. Yeah. Right? Like, and so, so people might know, like, if, if they're a chair former, if that's who they are by nature and they're methodical and they're slow and that's how they like to work, they might recognize, like, that's not really the place for me. Okay. Um, but it's it's like selling the, it's like selling a you know custom brewed batch of pale ale versus Bud Light. There are yeah. pros and cons to both. Right, Marin, you're great. You're a great wordsmith. You paint a great picture. I might need to hire you to come do some some work for us here at Daxco. <laughs> That's great. Now let's flip the script a little bit and let's talk about internal communications for your current employees, for your current team members, um, the upsell perhaps. One of the things as a, a, a executive HR person, um, and at Daxco, we are very pro feedback. We want feedback. We want feedback. Sometimes it's difficult to read the feedback, but we want the feedback. I will just say every time, one of the things that we get pinged on and every company I ever have been is employees still want more communication, more communication, more transparency, more communication, more transparency. Um, and it's something that even the best of companies struggle with. Um, do you have, again, some just some bite-sized little nuggets, some tasty little nuggets of good, some simple things that people can do to help communicate internally better? So what we do is, is um, we, have a multiple, we have multiple things that we do here um, at Red Branch that we have been able to implement in other companies as we help them with their employer brands and retention strategies and things like that. The first thing is there's really nothing that's going to replace face-to-face. -face. Yeah. If you're only doing yeah. annual, annual reviews, it's not going to work. Okay. The, uh, just the next workforce, millennials are the largest generation within like, what, four years? Mm -hmm. um, they need weekly feedback. Sure. I don't know what that means to you, but that scares the crap out of me, and I only have 20 people. Right. <laughs> right. Right. 
So we do a multitude of things. There's the face-to-face, -face, and we encourage it between colleagues. So instead of sending an email or doing a Slack message, you can get up from your desk, walk over there. I know that doesn't work for everybody, but that's a piece of it. The second piece of it is immediate confrontation. Okay. Um, that sounds scary, but what it means to us is if you have a problem with something that's been given to you, you go over and say, hey, I don't feel like this is what I asked for. I'm confused as to where you were coming from with this. And we talk it out immediately before the problem gets too big. Um, that not only fulfills the need for, for recognition and feedback, but it also helps get projects out the door faster. Okay. The third thing that we do is micro feedback. Um, you can cut this out if you would like to, uh, but we use a service called iReview. I'm sure you know Michael Heller. Um, it's just quick weekly notes that I send to them. They're allowed to send them back to me okay. uh, with their own feedback. They're positive, negative, neutral, and then we have five areas where we discuss career pathing, clarification of expectations, um, leadership, input, whatever. Sure. Um, so we so we do that on a bi-weekly basis. So okay. okay. And then we have every three months we have performance reviews. So it used to be every two months. Mm -hmm. Now that we've grown bigger, it's every quarter. Okay. Um, they are a half hour long, and we ask four things. Uh, what are you proud of? What are you struggling with? What are your personal goals? And what would you like to accomplish before your next review? Right. And then we help create we help them create a plan for that to happen. See, one of the things that I love hearing from you, Maren, because I subscribe to the same kind of cadence that you're talking about. What a lot of people are hearing right now, they're probably shocked at how much intercommunication you're having. We're having a quarterly review. We're having weekly this. We're having biweekly this. Frankly, friends, that is the way it has to be. Maren's job as the leader, it is her work to be sure that she is engaged to make sure her people are communicated with and they have clear expectations. Um, a lot of folks um, are now just starting to understand with the new generation, with the millennials, and frankly, I'm Gen X, I want it too. And I bet you my mother who was a boomer, had all of this happen in her day, would have liked it as well. Um, so um, I happen to agree with you on all of those things, by the way. Um, last question Gee, on communication, but not so much interpersonal, but maybe company-wide communication. Do you know of any tools or of any type of um, I don't know, methods, methods or anything that helps with inner departmental or corporate-wide communications better, whether it's an instant messaging system or some other type of platform or, or anything? So we, um, we have multiple groups within our email, and I'm sure most companies do, content, PR, social media, whatever. Sure. Um, but, but what ends up being uh, the most effective are, that's kind of our trifecta. Okay. First, getting up, right. getting over, because we're a small company, right? Like, sure. We know that we have advantages that larger companies don't. Like if you go and talk to the head of accounting, not everyone's going to hear your conversation and learn from that. So yeah. get that. Uh, we use a system called Bitrix 24, which is not tremendously popular, certainly not as popular as Slack, but we feel like way more effective. What's it called again? What is it? It's called Bitrix. Bitrix, okay. B-I-T-R-I-X 24. All right. Um, it's very affordable. It integrates with your CRM and your email and your calendar and your clients, and there's work groups and there's PM groups. There's, It's it's too much to go into here. Yeah, that's, that's fun. Effective for us. And we encourage all... all um, all of our SMEs, subject matter experts, to put stuff in there. If they have a question, even if they think it doesn't apply to another group, we encourage them to put that in there so that everyone can learn from the exchange. Okay. Um, and sometimes we just use it for silly gifts. Okay, right. Sure. Sure. Very good. The other thing that we do is, and we've written about this, and it's been written up in lots of magazines. It's called the Eat and Eat, and it happens every Friday at 3.30. Okay. Uh, we have lots of wine, lots of cake, uh, lots of cheese. I mean, carrots, I guess, for people on a diet. <laughs> oh, come on. Cheese is diet food. Exactly. So, and, and we just, we talk about our wins and we talk about what we're proud of somebody else for. We say, I'm proud of me for this. I'm proud of Dawn for this. And this is what I learned. And, th and that's it. And we just, it just continues to foster a feeling of we're all on the same team and we care about each other's wins and successes. We talk about new business and stuff that's coming down the pike and it works really well. Fabulous. Well, Marin, do you have any last advice or any other tips for the great folks here uh, watching No Scrubs? Yeah, I would say that um, it's very clear from the blog posts that you've written and other blog posts that HR really needs marketing to come in and help them do A, B, and C. But I think what's less clear is how marketing might need HR to come in and say, hey, this is how you 
this is how you should deal with people. Here's a great process that you can apply to something that you're building out there. Yeah. So I would be cautious about rating one skill above or below another. I think bedfellows is the perfect term mm -hmm. on equal terms. We teach each other and it doesn't have to be one person is better than the other. It has to be like we can both learn from each other's discipline. Absolutely. And build off that. Absolutely. And I'm I'm going to leave it at that. I think that is the perfect way to end the segment. Um, Maren, where are you going to be? Are you going to be at any conferences? Are you going to be doing any, just eat, just hanging out, uh, speaking yeah, engagements? I'm going, be, I'm going to be at TA Tech, Talent Acquisition Tech. Okay. In Orlando, I think in 10 days. Okay. So, All right. Um, it's in April. And then, of course, Sherm National in yes. D.C. I will see everybody there. I think there are a lot of events happening around D.C. And we've re recently gotten an influx of business from there. So right. I'll probably be seeing you in the D.C. area very soon. All right. Very, very good. Well, Maren, it's always a pleasure. Can't wait to catch up some more. Um, gang, I'm Dawn Burke here for No Scrubs, brought to you again by Fistful of Talent and our great friends at Job Fight. Thank you from me and all the FOT crew. See y'all later. Trying to holler at me.